Currently there are 523 abandoned uranium mines that have been identified by US EPA uh, where they're looking at the best methods to clean that up. Traditional methods uh, require the transportation of 100% of that material to a disposal facility. So not only is that extremely expensive, but it just moves the problem from one area to the next and it creates a lot of traffic and disturbance to local communities by having that much amount of material leave. Hi, my name is Elsa Johnson. I'm a uh, Community Involvement Coordinator for US EPA Region 9 San Francisco, and I work with uh, 24 uranium impacted communities. I pull everyone together, those uh, contractors that work for the responsible parties, and then of course US EPA, my agency, and then uh, Navajo EPA and uh, Navajo AML uh, come together and we coordinate our activities and we discuss our, um, you know, our findings uh, on these investigation of these sites. Yeah, James Benali in Chia. Tuko pa hain shlo ishin pa shishin tuka nesani pa shichi. Again, my name is James Benali, and I'm the chapter president for Cove Community. We've been dealing with abandoned uranium mine legacy for the last 75 years. Again, like I said, uh, a lot of people are still struggling with the effects, and then there's a lot of still a lot of affliction from 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 the past uh, abandoned uranium mines, and then. Like I said, we are looking forward to having our sites being cleaned up. And what this demonstration provided us is another avenue that we could take a look at and say, hey, maybe this is something that could be incorporated into the cleanup activities. Maybe this venture will save our some of the tronics money that we were awarded to, to where we can be able to utilize all of the funding that we got to address everything and hopefully that we claim reclaim everything. Yeah, so essentially, um High pressure slurry ablation revolves around processing solid material in slurry form. Essentially all that's needed is some processing water and the material that you're trying to process. You're essentially using the material as its intrinsic grinding media, which allows for that quartz to not be broken up and for that uranium containing mineral to be broken into the fine fraction, allowing for easy size separation. And that's that's why I think we're gonna be able to make uh, an incredible difference down here. Yeah, I work for the office of Teresa Ledger Fernandez, Congresswoman and Representative. Um, I'm her Northwest Field Representative and her Navajo Nation liaison and wanted to see exactly the inner workings and what it might be able to help in our uranium um, workers and our families that have been impacted by it and the removal of the uranium from um, in our areas and all of Navajo Nation and in all of the nation. And so I'm just here being able to just kind of listen and learn and see what I can take back and be able to help. That's what I'm here for and I'm honored to be here and to be able to witness, I believe is something historic. And for myself personally, I've been very passionate about this project since we began. First uh, visiting the Navajo Nation in 2018, I could see the extreme need for a kind of innovative technology to come out and help clean up these sites. Currently, the only methods are to haul 100% of this material off-site or to actually cap the material as it sits on the site. We believe with our technology, we can come in, process the material, and concentrate the hazardous waste in an economic fashion. Hello, my name is uh, Hubert Daisy. I'm the owner of Black Mesa Fuels. I run the company on the Navajo Nation. I'm registered with the uh, business regulatory, doing business here on the Navajo Nation. More, we like to have more Navajo small business participate in these projects. And so really just being able to tell our story, um, educate uh, the public, industry, and agencies on how our technology works, answer questions, addre address potential issues of concern is uh, what we've been focused on today. We've actually been at three total sites the last few weeks. Uh, we started at the old Church Rock site, uh, then went to the Quivera mine site, and now here we're at um, in the beautiful Cove community at the Cove Transfer Station site. Yate, uh, my name is Paulette Yazi. Uh, my clans are Kutsuri Shlen Kiaani Bashishchi Mairishki Jishche. And my title is I'm a casework manager with Congressman Tom Halloran's office. So I have a little, you know, I had a family member, her name, my, my Nolly, which is my father's mother. She was a downwinder. She passed away about almost 35 years ago now and uh, she had cancer so this is very close in, to my heart I want to make sure that we 
get the reports back to our congressman. That way he can talk to uh, other representatives in the U.S. House of Representatives. And it's good for this community to know what's going on, what's happening, and for everybody else in the United States, the country, to know what's going on here. Uh, it was easy to take out the uranium, but it's taken such a long time to clean up. I chair the Resource and Development Committee of the 24th Navajo Council and here today to actually see how the soil that are contaminated could be separated into a collision machine and clean it up and the waste be distributed to other places. So this was very good. I would recommend everybody's here, all the partners, the chapter, the community, the AML office, US EPA, Navajo EPA. So I learned a lot today and I would recommend this to leadership. So the longer this problem remains unsolved, uh, the more dangerous it gets. And so, you know, we're really excited that we have a solution that's ready today to tackle the significant problem.